Hi, good morning, friends. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy. Well, we're recording on Easter, but, yeah, uh, but you're probably not going to see this until after Easter. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Welcome to our channel, Fun and welcome. Friends. Um, I'm Avalon. I'm Sabrina. And welcome to the channel. Hi, you're welcome. Where we like read books and talk. Up dog videos and talk and just do random stuff I don't know yeah random <laughs> it's stuff. kind of become a random channel yeah whatever we feel like really whatever we feel like um <clears throat> welcome back from spring break spring break yes yeah that was fun <laughs> now we have to go back to school yeah. not so fun not so fun um let's see here what is it let's go and recap let's do the recap and then we'll do Predictions. Predictions. Okay, so we just did chapter six last time where we left off. And during that chapter, it was Alaric's party or gathering at his house for all of the students that he has. And um, I guess Damon ended up surprising Elena there and was pretending to be a college kid. And um, and then him and Stefan kind of got into like a tizzy. And they were like kind of having a standoff, and Elena was able to calm Stefan down, and then they were leaving the party, and as they were leaving, the teacher, Alaric, um, was asking, like, leaving so soon, huh? And then they kind of left, and that was it. Yeah. Basically. So we don't know why, why it's, um, Damon is posing as a college kid. College kid, but we'll find out soon. Yes. All right, to the theory board. Dun, dun, theory dun. board <laughs> hasn't changed. <laughs> uh, where is it? Meredith's going to get killed off. Uh, we'll see more of Bonnie's powers. Catherine is alive, and Robert, the fiancé of the aunt, will get killed off. To make way for Alaric. Hmm. To make way for a lark. To make way for a lark for the ants, which I'm all about. Please excuse my snottiness. I am having allergy allergies. <laughs> we had rain and, and then, then scorching really, hot. Really, really hot. And so Santa Ana's. Literally, I went on my run the other day, and you could see the yellow in the street yeah. from all the, on the cars. It's and, yeah. so bad right now. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> Chapter seven. Chapter seven. Next time, Stefan said quietly, I won't leave. Elena knew he meant it, and it terrified her. But just now, her emotions were quickly co coasting in neutral, and she didn't want to argue. He was there, she said, inside an ordinary house full of ordinary people, just as if he had been, he had every right to be. I wouldn't have thought he would dare. Why not? Stefan said briefly, bitterly. I was there in an ordinary house full of ordinary people, just as if I had every right to be. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. It's just that the only other time I've seen him in public was at a haunted house when he was wearing a mask and a costume and it was dark. Before that, it was always somewhere deserted, like a gym that night. I was alone or in a graveyard. She knew it was, uh, she knew as soon as she had said the last part that it was a mistake. She still hadn't told Stefan what was going, she was going to find Damon three days ago. In the driver's seat, he stiffened. We're in the graveyard. Yes, I mean, I meant that day bon Bonnie and Meredith and I were chased out. I was assuming it must have been Damon who chased us. And the place was deserted except for the three of us. Oh, she's lying. She's not going to tell him that she confronted Damon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> her first lie to her boyfriend. <laughs> Why was she lying to him? Because a small voice in her head answered grimly. Otherwise, he might snap. Knowing what Damon had said to her, what he had promised was in store, might be all that was needed to send Stefan over the edge. I can tell, never tell with him, she realized with a sick jolt. Not about the time or about anything Damon does in the future. If he wants to fight Damon, he dies. Then he'll never know, she promised herself, no matter what I have to do. I'll keep them from fighting each other over me, no matter what. From a for a moment, apprehension chilled her. Five hundred years ago, Catherine had tried to keep them from fighting, and she had succeeded only in forcing them to the death match. But she wouldn't make the same mistake. Elena told herself fiercely, Catherine's methods had been stupid and childish. Who else would it but a stupid child would kill herself in the hope that two rivals for her hand would become friends? It had been the worst mistake of the whole sorry affair. Because of it, the rivalry between Stefan and Damon had turned into an impl 
implicatable hatred. <laughs> And what's more, Stefan had lived with the guilt of it ever since. He blamed himself for Catherine's stupidity and weakness. Groping for another subject, she said, Do you think someone invited him in? Obvious, because he was in. <clears throat> That's true, people like you. You have to be invited in. But Damon got into the gym without an invitation. That's because the gym is a dwelling, isn't a dwelling for living. That's the one criterion. It doesn't matter if it's a house or a tent or an apartment above a store. If a living human eat and sleep there, we need to be invited inside. But I didn't invite you in my house. Yes, you did. The first night when I drove you home, you pushed the door open and nodded to me. It doesn't have to be a verbal invitation. If the intent was there, that's enough. And the person inviting you doesn't have to be someone who actually lives in the house. Any human will do. I think that's different from the show. Yeah. I think in the show it has to be the owner of the house. I thought so too. Elena was thinking, what about a riverboat? Same thing. Although the running water can be a barrier in itself, for some of us it's impossible to cross. Elena had a sudden vision of herself and Meredith and Bonnie racing for Wickery Bridge because somehow she had known that if they got to the other side of the river, they would be safe from whatever was after them. So that's why, she whispered, but still didn't explain how she'd known, though. It was as if the knowledge had been put into her head from some outside source, then she realized something else. You took me across the bridge. You can still run across running water. That's because I'm weak, he said flatly, with no emotion behind it. It's ironic, but the stronger your powers are, the more you're affected by certain limitations. The more you belong in the dark and the more the rules of the dark bind you. What other rules are there, said Elena. She was beginning to see the glimmer of a plan, or at least the hope of a plan. Stefan looked at her. Yes, he said. I think it's time you knew. The more you know about Damon, the more of a chance you have of protecting yourself. Of protecting myself? Perhaps Stefan knew more than he thought. she thought. But as he turned the car into the side street and parked it, she just said, Okay, should I be stocking up on garlic? <laughs> <laughs> he laughed. Only if you want to be unpopular. There are certain plants, though, that might help you, like Ravain. It's an herb that's supposed to protect you against bewitchment, and it can keep your mind clear, even if someone's using powers against you. People used to wear it around their necks. Bonnie would love it. It's a sacred. It's sacred to the druids. Vervain? said Elena, sat, tasting the unfamiliar word. What else? Strong light or direct sunlight can be painful. You'll notice the weather's changed. I've noticed, said Elena after a beat. You mean Damon's been doing that? He must be. It takes enormous power to control the elements, but it's... Must be easy for him to travel in the daylight. As long as he keeps it cloudy, he doesn't need to protect his eyes. Neither do you, said Elena. But what, well, what about, well, crosses and things? No effect, said Stefan, except if that person holding one believes it's protection, it can strengthen their will to resist tremendously. Uh, silver bullets? Stefan laughed again shortly. That's for werewolves. From what I've heard, they don't like silver in any form. A wooden stake through the heart is still the approved method for my kind. There are other ways that are more or less effective, though. Burning, beheading, driving nails through the temples, or best of all, Stefan. The lonely, bitter smile on his face dismayed her. What about changing into animals, she said. Before you said that with enough power you can... You could do that. If Damon can be an animal he likes, how will I ever recognize him? I'm not only animal. Love hug. Oh, I know. <laughs> he can't, they can't even see. <laughs> no. Chewy's oh. right there. He's, he's in a cuddle snooter. Mm -hmm. Here, let's see if I can turn it just a little. There he is. There he is. There's your boy, the owl. What he's a good so boy. Cute. I think he's feeling a little needy this morning. Just a little. Just a little. Just a little needy. Stefan, the lonely, bitter smile on his face dismayed her. What about changing the animals, she said. Before you said, with enough power, you could... <laughs> if Damon can be any animal he likes, how will I recognize him? Not any animal he likes. He's limited to one animal, or at the most two. Even with the powers, I don't think he could sustain any more than that. So we keep looking out for a crow? Right. You may be able to tell if he's around, too, by looking at regular animals. They usually don't react very well to us. They seem to sense we're hunters. Yang Zi kept barking at that crow. Yang Zi. <laughs> no, Yang -Zi. Poor Yang Zi. Rest in Yang -Zi. peace. 
<laughs> uh, Yang Z kept parking at that crow. It was as if he knew that there was something wrong about it, Elena remembered. Ah, Stefan, she added, in a change of tone that now struck her. What about mirrors? I don't remember ever seeing you in one. For a moment, he didn't answer. Then he said, legend has it that the mirrors reflect, reflect the soul of a person who looks in them. That's why primitive people are afraid of mirrors. They're afraid that their souls will be trapped and stolen. My kind is supposed to have no reflection because we have no souls. Slowly, he reached up to the rearview mirror and tilted it downward, adjusting it so that Elena could look at it. In the silver glass, he saw his eyes, lost, haunted, and infinitely sad. There was nothing to do but hold on to him and Elena did. I love you, she, she whispered. It was the only comfort she could give him. It was all that she had. His arms tightened around her, his face buried in her hair. You're the mirror, he whispered back. It was good to feel him relax, tension flowing out of his body as warmth and comfort flowed in. She was comforted too, this sense of peace infusing with her, surrounding her. It was so good that she forgot to ask what he meant until they were at the front door saying goodbye. I'm here, she said then, looking at him. You've stolen my soul, he said, locked the door behind you and didn't open it again tonight. Then he was gone. Elena, thank heaven, said Aunt Judith. When Elena stared at her, she added, Bonnie called from the party. She said you left unexpectedly, and when you didn't come home, I was worried. For good reason, because you keep not showing up at home. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what happens when you don't Here show up. going to get worried every single time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stefan and I went for a ride. Elena didn't like the expression on her aunt's face when she said that. Is there a problem? No, no, it's just Aunt Judith didn't even know how to finish her sentence. Elena, I wonder if it might not be a good idea to not quite see Stefan so much. Elena went still. You too. Isn't it isn't that I believe in gossip, Aunt Judith assured her, but for your own sake, it might be the in your best <clears throat> it might be best to get a little distance from him. To dump him, to abandon him because people are spreading rumors about him, to keep myself away from the mud slinging in case any of it sticks to me. The theatrics I know. of a teenager's Teenager. mind. <laughs> we were like that, too, though. Oh, I know. That I was our thought we process, too. Gosh. <laughs> Anger was a welcome release, and the words crowded in Elena's throat, all trying to get out at once. No, I don't think it was a good idea, Aunt Judith. And if it were Robert, we were talking about you wouldn't either, or maybe you would. Elena, I'm not... <sighs> I will not have you speaking to me in that tone. I'm not, I'm finished anyway, Elena cried, whirled blindly towards the stairs. The cold never bothered me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> she managed to keep the tears back until she was in her own room with the door locked. Then she threw herself on the bed and sobbed. You're just so needy today, sir. Why don't you put your feet down? He can come lay right here. Do you want to come over here? Come on, Papa. Hi. Hi, handsome boy. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. You go, boy. You go, boy. She dragged herself up a while later to call Bonnie. Bonnie was excited and vulnerable. Vulnerable? I've never even heard of that word. What? V O L U B L E. Vulnerable. Vulnerable? Huh. I'll have to look that one up. Yes. Um, what on earth did Elena mean? Had something unusual happened after she and Stefan left? The unusual thing was their leaving. No, that new guy, Damon Hunt, said anything about Stefan afterward. He was, he just hung around for a while and then disappeared. No, Bonnie hadn't seen him leave with anybody. Why? Was Elena jealous? Yes, but that was meant to be a joke. But really, he was gorgeous, wasn't he? After... Almost more gorgeous than Stefan. I think both of the Salvatore brothers are just absolutely gorgeous. It's hard and to that's pick why, one. That's why Catherine wanted them both. I know. I mean, I've I, in high school, I was always team Stefan. And then, like, in my 20s, I'm, like, slowly, gra gradually going towards team Damon. But then I, like, I'm, like, I was so, so stuck on team Stefan. So I'm, like, I don't oh, know. I'm, which I'm totally one. team Damon. But I didn't find out until recently that they're, like, in their 40s. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? The actors. Yeah. The actors. The actors, not, not, the, not the characters. characters.
Uh, they're in their 40s. I was like, man, but you're they're gorgeous. <laughs> you're that attractive. Still. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bye-bye. Of course, if you liked lighter light hair, well, lighter hair and hazel eyes, Elena immediately deduced that Lark Saltzman's eyes were hazel. She got off the phone at last and only then remembered the note she found in her purse. She should have asked Bonnie if anyone had gotten near her purse while she was in the dining room, but then Bonnie and Meredith had been in the dining room part of the part of the time themselves. Someone might have done it then. The very sight of the violet paper made her taste tin in the back of her mouth. She could hardly bear to look at it, and now that she was alone, she had to unfold it and read it again, all that time hoping that somehow the time and the words might be different. And she might have been mistaken before. But they weren't different. The sharp, clean block letters stood out against the pale background as if they were ten feet high. I want to touch him more than any boy I've ever known, and I know he wants it too, but he's holding back on me. Oh, I know who this is. Who? It's totally Catherine. You think so? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Catherine probably stole her diary. Yeah, she had to have. Because Damon wouldn't want it. Yeah. He wouldn't need it for anything. No. Yeah. Bonnie doesn't need it. Yeah. And we haven't heard from Catherine in a while. Yeah, so I, she's probably doing all this behind the work stuff. If not, then it's, uh, so it's either Caroline or it's Catherine. Oh, yeah, that's a good prediction. Caroline or Catherine. It could be either of the two. Yeah. I like where you're going with this. Yeah. I agree. Her words from her diary, the one that had been stolen. The next day, Meredith and Bonnie rang her doorbell. Stefan called me last night, said Meredith. He said he wanted to make sure you weren't walking to school alone. He's not going to be at school today, so he asked if Bonnie and I could come over and escort you. Escort you, said Bonnie, who was clearly in the good mood. Chaperone you. I think it's so sweet of him to be so protective. He's probably an Aquarius, too, said Meredith. Come on, Elena, before I kill her to shut her up about a lark. Elena walked in silence, wondering what Stefan was going to do was doing to keep him from school. She felt vul vulnerable and exposed today as if her skin were on the inside out. One of those days. <laughs> oh, gosh. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to come up in my lap so bad. You can pull him up in the lap. He's just heavy. Come on. Oh, my gosh. Come on. I can't get your hind legs up here. Come on, Bubba. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, oh, big you need boy. <laughs> you big, yeah, boy. big boy. Yes. All right. How come I get his butt? I don't know. <laughs> How did this work out this way? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Alina walked in silence, running what Stefan was was doing that kept him from school. She felt vulnerable and exposed today as if her skin were on the inside out. One of these days when she was ready to cry at the drop of a hat. On the office bulletin board was tacked a piece of violet paper. She should have known. She had to have known somewhere deep inside the thief wasn't satisfied with letting her know her private words that had been read. He was showing her they could be made public. She ripped the note off the board and crumpled it. But... Not before she glimpsed the words. In one glance, they were seared into her brain. I feel as if someone has hurt him terribly in the past, and he's never gotten over it. But I also think there's something he's terrified of, some secret that he's afraid to find out. He's afraid I'll find out. Elena, what is that? What's the matter? Elena, come back here. Bonnie and Meredith followed her to the nearest girl's bathroom, where they stood over the wastebasket, shredding the note into microscopic pieces, breathing as... My reading's not that boring. <laughs> uh, no, it's in microscopic pieces, breathing as if she'd ran a race. They looked at each other and then turned to survey the bathroom stalls. Okay, said Meredith loudly. Senior privilege, you. She wraps the, the only do closed door. Come out. Some rustling and a bewildered freshman emerged. But I didn't even... Out! Outside, Bonnie ordered. And you, she said to the girl washing her hands. Stand out there and make sure nobody comes in. But why? What are you? Move, chick. If anybody comes through that door, we're holding you responsible. 
Then the door was closed again. They rounded to Elena. Okay, this is a stick-up, said Meredith. Come on, Elena, give. Elena ripped the, the t last tiny shred of paper caught between the laughter and tears. She wanted to tell them everything, but she couldn't. She settled for telling them about the diary. They were as angry as and indignant as she was. It had to be someone at the party, Meredith said at last, once they had been, expressed their opinions of the thief's character, morals, and probable destination in the afterlife. <laughs> The singing or no the the probable destination in the afterlife. I thought that was funny. Yeah, I heard that, and then I also heard this guy singing and chewies. <laughs> like what? I'm like what? I'm like hearing three different things right now. Anyways, <laughs> but anybody there could have done it. I don't remember anyone in particular going near your purse, but that room was wall to wall people, and it could ha have happened without my noticing. And why would you want to do this, Bonnie? Said. Put in unless Elena, the night we found stuff in, you were hinting around the around at some things. You said you thought you knew who the killer was. I don't think I know. I know. But if you were wondering if this might be connected, I'm not sure. I suppose it could be the same person might have done it. Bonnie was horrified. But that means the killer is a student at the school. When Elena shook her head, she went on. The people at the party who were students... The only people at the party who weren't students was the new guy and Alaric. Her expression changed. Alaric didn't kill Mr. Tanner. He couldn't, He wasn't even in Fell's church then. I know Alaric didn't do it. She'd gone too far to stop. Now, Bonnie and Meredith knew too much. Damon did. That guy was the killer? The guy that kissed me? Bonnie calmed down. As always, other people, people's hysteria made a lot... Elena feel more in control. Yes, he's the killer, and we all three have to be on the guard against him. That's why I'm telling you, never, never ask him into your house. Elena stopped regarding their faces of friends. They were staring at her, and the moment she had the sickening question that they didn't believe her, that they were going to question her sanity. But all Meredith asked in an even tone, even detached tone was, are you sure about this? Yes, I'm sure he's the murderer and the one who put stuff in the well. And he might be after one of us next, and I don't know if there's any way to stop him. Well then, said Meredith, lifting her eyebrows, no wonder you and Stefan were in such a hurry to leave the party. Caroline gave Elena a vicious smirk as Elena walked into the cafeteria, but Elena was almost beyond noticing. One thing she noticed right away, though, Vicky Bennett was here. Vicky hadn't been to school since the night Matt and Bonnie and Meredith had found her wandering in the road, raving about mist and eyes and something terrible in the graveyard. The doctors who checked her afterwards said there was nothing much wrong with her physically, but she still hadn't returned to Robert E. Lee. People whispered about psychologists and drug treatments they Isn't were trying. Isn't Vicky Matt's sister, though? Like, in the TV show, she is. Yeah, in this, no. She's not? No. Okay. Uh, she was the one who was being a slut with... Um, the other guy. Yeah. At the After the dance. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. A slut. A slut. Shoot with a shoot. We're not talking about you, Chewie. Not you. You're, no, you're, not at all. Look at him. Look how gorgeous so, he looks. So majestic. Chewie, majestic. you're so majestic. And on top of it, he got groomed recently, so he even looks more even majestic. more majestic. He's a good boy. <laughs> She didn't look crazy, though, Elena thought. She looked pale and subdued and sort of crumpled into her clothing. And when Elena passed her, she looked up. Her eyes were like a startled fawns. It was strange to sit in a half-empty table with only Bonnie and Meredith for company. Usually people were crowding to get seats around the three of them. We didn't finish talking this morning, Meredith said. Go get something to eat and we'll figure out what to do about those notes. Not hungry, said Elena flatly. And what can we do? If it's Damon, there's no way to stop him. Trust me, it's not a matter for police. That's why I haven't told them he's the killer. There isn't any proof, and besides, they are never... Bonnie, you're not listening. Sorry, said Bonnie, who was staring past Elena's left ear. But something weird is going on up there. Elena turned to Vicky Bennett, was standing at the front of the cafeteria, but she no longer seemed crumpled and subdued. She was looking around the room in a shot, sly and assessing manner, smiling. 
Well, she doesn't look normal, but I wouldn't say she was being weird exactly, Meredith said. Then she added, wait a minute. Vicky was unbuttoning her cardigan, but it was the way she was doing, and deliberate four flicks of her fingers, all the while looking around with a secretive smile. That was odd. When the last button was undone, she took the sweater daintily between the forefinger and thumb and slid it down over one first one arm, then the other, and she dropped the sweater to the floor. Weird is the word, confirmed Meredith. <laughs> Students crossed in front of Vicky, Vicky with laden trays, glancing at her curiously, and then looked back over their shoulders when they had passed. They didn't exactly stop walking, though, until she took off her shoes. She did it gracefully, catching the heel of one pump of her shoe uh, of the other and pushing it off. Then she kicked off the second pump. She can't keep going, murmured Bonnie as Vicky's fingers moved to the Stim simulated pearl buttons on her white silk blouse. Heads were turning. People were poking one another and gesturing. Around Vicky, a small group had gathered, standing far enough back that they didn't interfere with anyone else's view. The white so she's undressing? She's like undressing herself in At the middle school? of the school cafeteria. Why? That's why they're saying it's weird. It is weird. Like, yeah. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> the white silk blouse ripped off, fluttering like a wounded ghost to the floor. Vicky was laying, wearing a lacy off-white slip underneath. There was no longer any sound in the cafeteria except the, the whispers. No one was eating. The group around Vicky had gotten larger. Vicky smiled demurely and began to unfasten clasps around her waist. Her pleated skirt fell to the floor. She stepped out of it and pushed it off to one side with her foot. Somebody stood up in the back of the cafeteria and chanted, Take it off! Take it off! Other voices joined in. Isn't anyone going to stop her? fumed Bonnie. Elena got up. The last time she got near Vicky, the other girl had screamed and struck her, but now as she got close, Vicky gave her a smile of a conspirator. Her lips moved, but Elena couldn't make out what she was saying over the chanting. Come on, Vicky, let's go, she said. Vicky's light brown hair tussled, <clears throat> tossed, and she plucked at the strap of her slip. Elena stooped to pick up the cardigan and wrap it around the girl's slender shoulders. As she did, as she touched Vicky, those half-closed eyes opened wide like a startled fawn again. Vicky stared at her wildly as if she had been awakened from a dream. She looked down at herself and her expression turned to disbelief. Pulling the cardigan around her more tightly, she backed away shivering. The room was quiet again. It's okay, Elena said smoothly. Come on. At the sound of her voice, Vicky jumped as if touched by a live wire. She stared at Elena, and then she exploded into action. You're one of them. I saw you. You're evil. She turned and ran barefoot out of the cafeteria, <laughs> leaving Elena stunned. Firstly, that was a long chapter. That was a very long chapter. That was a really long chapter. Secondly, I wonder what's compelling her. Uh, I So I'm thinking, this is my prediction, I think it's Catherine. She has a prediction. I think it's Catherine. I think Catherine's out to get her because she's like, both the guys are interested in her. Mm hmm And Catherine and doesn't like that. Ever. Excerpts from mm -hmm. the uh, diary or things that clearly pertain to Catherine. Mm hmm I like it. I like where you're going with it. And then on top of it, like, I think Catherine's kind of calling her out and being like, you're a snoot. So she, uh, she's having Vicky undress mm -hmm. and stuff in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as Elena went over, she was back to normal. I don't think I don't think Damon would do that. Mm -hmm. I don't see Damon doing that. Mm -hmm. and Vicky kept saying, "You're one, one of out. them," and they look very similar. I want you to hit your head. Gentle buddy. Sh shnoot. Oh, there you go. Gentle buddy. Oh, oh this boy. is the, the weirdest slither. Slithering, slithering snake. I'm Goodbye, a buddy. Snake. <laughs> I'm a snake. Slithering, slithering snake. <laughs> That's from TikTok. I'm a snake. I'm a snake. A slithering, slithering snake. 
shake it off. Shake it off. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's my prediction. I, I think it's I think it's Catherine. Yeah. I think we're about to see Catherine more. I do too. I totally agree with that prediction. Because yeah. both the guys are like interested in her, and she's mm-hmm. like, "This is a man." Mm-hmm. Back she away. doesn't like to share. Back away. Yeah. I agree with you. I don't have any other predictions. <laughs> um, we'll see. This one was all you, boo. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, it was really weird that they decided to have her start in dressing, though. Poor Vicky. That is weird. Yeah. Poor Vicky. Vicky's just getting the short end of the stick here. She, well, she really, really did nothing. I would like to see more about Tyler. I ha- I think that that's going to end up coming down in the later books. Probably. I don't think that he's going to turn into a werewolf in this one. No. Especially because I want to say that there's like seven or eight books. Yeah, there's a lot of books. <laughs> We're only on like what? Book two? two. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. we got a long way to go. My God! I know that we have. I know that we have books three and four, but I don't have the rest, so I'll have to get those eventually if we're gonna do those. Okay. I didn't realize they had that many books. There's a lot of books, dude. I'm reading a book right now called Cupidity. Absolutely love it, but I don't think it'd be appropriate to read it on YouTube unless there's like an 18 and up. We could add 18 and up. That's true. I am absolutely loving it right now. One of our um, commenters asked if we were reading this a certain book series. I can't remember off the top of my head. I can actually find it on, on here. And I've never heard of it, but I think you have. I so. might have. I read a lot. She reads a lot of books. I, know it's back and forth, and it's I, have, a, I have a couple of ones. I want to do um, Six of Crows. I just bought that one because I heard that they're making a Netflix series of it. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah I think you told me. No, that that was, was for um, the, School of Good and Evil. School of School of Good and Evil. That's what you told me. Yeah, they're making a lot of Netflix shows right now about books that are coming out, which is nice. It is really nice. Oh, our commenter said, "Have we ever seen the trilogy of terror? It's pretty scary about a voodoo doll." I have not. I haven't either, but it's been recommended. I will. Jump we'll look on into it. it. Jump on it. Jump on it. <laughs> Yep. Um, but we will look into it because it sounds interesting. That sounds yeah. like something up our alley of like interest. So I will just. We will explore that. Explore that. Jump on it. Jump on it. Okay, I think we're. T- <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you guys have any predictions or comments or questions or anything like that, just put them in the comments below. Also, follow us on our Instagram page, Fun and Friends, to have most up to date information of our website or of our YouTube channel and any other information that we put out there for content. So, like our spring break plans. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, we posted about that a little late, I think. Yeah. But that, that's our bad. That was our bad, but yeah. So, go on there, follow us so you can get all of our information and like special announcements and things like that. Um, until then, we will see you next time. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Easter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>